morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is... What day is it? It is July? It is still July. It is July 31st, and we're here with another episode of First Period. But we're going to be doing this one relatively quick. As you can tell, your boy does not have a voice. Fuck you, Fightin' Tune. Thank you, Kirsch. Love you very much. You are a good friend, and you've been here for a long, 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 long time. I appreciate everybody. Oh, Sith Kitty with a dog emote. Who's is that? Oh, it's Hyena. Well, it's good enough. I like it. What up, Link? What up, Half Latino? What up, Smiley? What up, Courtney? What up, ADG? How you guys doing? How are you? Um, how are you guys doing today? It is in the middle of summer, and I am sick like the middle of winter. I don't understand it either. Um, no, I've been up for about an hour, um, trying to get my voice going, but it's just not happening, so this is pretty much where we're going to be at, I think. Like I said, today's going to be pretty short, uh, we're just going to go through some of the news that's going on in the world of Smite, and just cover it up. To be fair, I don't really have anything to rant and rave about except for 3v3, and for the sake of my own employment, it's probably a good thing that I can't because I just want to yell at you people. So let's just, we'll mention it. How about that? Um, one of the bigger news things as far as overall, uh, one of the big news things as far as overall big picture stuff is that we've got the Console Challenger Cup which is a really big deal. Um, Console Challenger Cup is not something that we've had going on. People have been asking about it and this, that, or a third. I don't know if any real details have been spilled, but basically, hi is going to team up with Face It, and they're going to be an online tournament play. Basically, what we have now for the PC. August 8th is when everything's going to start. And teams are going to be seated based on their face it skill level in a single elimination open bracket tournament. Like old school Challenger Cup. Nothing too crazy. Um, every single day, there'll be a uh, finals for the best of three. And then the winner will go to the grand finals. That'll happen on the 16th and 17th for NA and E, respectively. Uh, we'll see those teams fight it out. Best of threes, blah, blah, blah. Um, again, single elimination. And then there is some money. Um, $2,500 goes to the first place team as well as they're qualified for allocation. And $1,500 goes to the second place team as well as qualifies for allocation. And they'll be playing against the bottom two SCL teams just like normal. So relatively um, relatively simple as far as the, uh, the console challenger scene is concerned. I want to start off with some news. Um, Face It is, I wouldn't say it's a CSGO organization. If you don't know who Face It is, they do work with CSGO. But Face It is basically um, a competitive online platform. Um, they are most known for CSGO, but they also have Dota and League and like World of Tanks and shit. And basically, um, it's... It's online ladders for these games. And Smites is going to feed directly into the Challenger scene. So that should work out. I want to start off with some news, but um, I'll talk a little bit about the home of F. Dot. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me, guys. I really don't. Um, I got really sick right after Sweden. Um, and I got better. I really did get better. And then I don't know what happened. I've gotten re sick. Uh, I was supposed to go to the doctors today, but I'm actually going to go do more 3v3 today, which I'm excited. Um, I went to the doctor the first time around when I was sick from Sweden and, you know, got a bunch of cough medicine, got a bunch of shit, but they were basically like, oh, it's viral. Um, just be sick for like three weeks and then we'll see you later. And I was like, okay, sure. Right. Um, and then... 
Uh, this time around, like I said, I don't know what happened. This past week, I got re-sick. And coughing a little bit more. And this time, I, like, actually, like, really lost my voice. So, it's, um, you know, it's 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 rough. Uh, Jatanbi, I appreciate it. Um, I do have to, I, I do have to do the show every Sunday. I'm very committed to this show. Today will be short. Usually, I do, like, a QA and a and I speak a little bit more on a platform. And I have, like, almost, you know, I have, like, something to talk about, particularly. Today's just going to be a news dump, and I'm going to go take it easy. Because, like I said, I have to do, uh... I have to do 3v3 later on today as well. Um, so, uh, I got sick from DreamHack, uh, or I got sick after DreamHack. Don't think it was related to DreamHack. Uh, but I went to the doctor after that, got some stuff, and then I got re-sick, like, this week. So I have to go back to the doctor, which I'm not super happy about. Um, but in any event, that's where we're at right now. Uh, I'm a little sick, and so we're just gonna, like I said, pretty much just a news dump today. A lot of cool stuff has been going on in Smite. More importantly, um, more importantly, a lot of dates have been dropped, which I think is really important. So we'll talk a lot about the dates that have been dropped. We'll talk a little bit about what's been going on. Like I said, Console Challenger Cup is very big. A lot of people have been asking me about it. It's all through Face It, um, and it'll start August 8th. So that's about a week from now. It's the same time around the SPL relegation will be aired. So you want to take a look at that. Uh, Esports.spotgame.com has all the info that you want. So you can so you can catch that out uh, for sure. A lot of people, a lot of people were asking me about console Childer Cup. So making a switch from console to PC. Um, we've been talking a lot about PC. A lot, a lot, a lot about PC. Um, so, or a lot about console, and I love console, but it is time to actually switch gears to PC. There's a lot of things going on, um, there's a lot of things going on when it comes to SPL, even the OPL starting again, so we'll touch upon those in a moment, but let's talk about some of the things around Smite. Tier 5 skin coming out, um, everybody's voting on it right now, seeing where everybody's at. They didn't... They did an assassin two years in a row, Thanatos and Thor. Now they're doing a mage. I think it'll be hilarious if they do Al Kwong. They won't. I'm going to be voting for Freya, obviously. So we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be like a Poseidon or some Zeus bullshit. But I want to see a Freya. I want to see a Kronos. I would love to see Hebo. These are the gods that I love. But everybody calls him a scumbag god, so I don't think we're going to see that. Um, my announcer pack is out. That's pretty sweet. Um, my announcer pack is out. That is a very, very sweet, uh, which I really enjoy. Um, I am proud of it. I am proud of it. But at the same time, I think it's important that I am cautiously proud of it. Uh, I, I think that OPL player ban? Um, at the same time, I'm cautiously proud of it. Um, I think it sounds cool, but at the same time, I want to see what everybody else thinks about it. I try really hard not to make it cringy. So, in an effort of not making it cringy, I don't know really what uh, what how it really came out. Um, I think it's on the PTS for sure. And then it'll be out in the game on Tuesday. On Tuesday, I think you'll be able to, to nab it. So, where is this... Where is this Oceanic Pro League Band thing? Competitive ruling. General harassment. Cringe crew. Nope. Hmm. I didn't see anything about OPL player bands. That's pretty nuts. I do not know, actually. Uh, so, um, I have to pack. If you've got to play with it on the PTS, let me know how it feels. That'd be cool. If not, Tuesday, pick up 200 things. And then you'll be able to find it. Thank you, Fats. I appreciate it. Yeah, Hindu man. I don't know what the fuck, but uh, it's rough. I'll be in doing 3v3 today, though, so we'll see how it's going. No, um, I've been up for about an hour now. 
Uh, my voice over the past couple of days have been going, and it's not fun. So today is a short episode. We're just running through the news. We talked a little bit about the Challenger Cup for console. It's going through Face It, which is pretty cool. It's all online, so there's that. Um, well, that sounds good. Uh, we talked about um, Tier 5 skin being a mage. Vote for our Kwong because it's hilarious. Um, talking about F. Dot Pack, it's on the PTS right now. I sound a lot better on it. Tell me if it sucks. I don't think it does, but I focused a lot on making it not cringe. So maybe I missed some of the other things doing that, which kind of really sucks. And now we're going to talk about Power Pots. What the fuck? That's literally what my note says. Yeah, I changed. I'm going to cover for Kevin. Um, Power Pots. What the fuck? Um,. I think power pots were so power pots had to change. Power pots weren't overpowered. The idea of power pots was awkward. Basically, forty power or whatever the fuck it was for four hundred fifty gold is not overpowered. But the fact that you could buy it in the beginning of the game tilted the game in a fa in a fashion that didn't really work. The idea was gamble, risk versus reward. Either I can buy this power pot and be ahead of my opponent, but if I die, I lose it. But it just wound up wound up being sort of like an arms race, where like if you don't have it, I do and get shit on, right? So that's kind of not good. Uh, so they change. So the idea was to change it. It's level gated, which means you can't buy it at level one. That problem is fixed. But now it's drastically different. Not even going to go over the specifics. Basically, the physical pot has a slow and a CC on it. The magical pot gives you mana back and is very they're both very very strong and basically what winds up happening is you have snowball abilities you have a situation where um you go to a team fight and it's around gold fury let's say you're looking at a 12 minute gold fury the team ahead buys these pots and they win the fight and they just snowball a little bit harder 450 gold is not that big of a deal to waste and if it earns you a team fight well huzzah I don't think, I don't know. Power Pots, not my favorite. Not my favorite. Uh, roster changes. Roster changes. Uh, LG had some roster changes. Mask and Xenotronics will join Luminosity Gaming. And I think this is a final realization that Luminosity is an average team. We'll come back to that. SPL. SPL has a lot of important dates coming out right now. Uh, relegations, Epsilon Invitational, the actual fall split, which a lot of people, myself included, have been really excited for. Um, and the OPL is going to start as well. So the OPL is the Oceanic Pro League. That's where it goes on down in Australia. Um, six teams, eight weeks. That all starts September 10th. So if you're up really late, um, September 10th, is when the Australian League games will be starting. Uh, and the Chowder Cup is actually very interesting. It's very interesting. Keep, listen to this one. So for the Oceanic Pro League, the way they're working it is their OPL, their Pro League, is a six-team, eight-week tournament. Right? Not tournament, but... It's an eight-week season. Six teams play each other twice, and that all starts September 10th. Their Challenger Cup is six teams, eight weeks. Thank you very much, McNugget. Really appreciate the love. Also, Fats, I don't remember if I uh, shout out the host, but I appreciate that so much. And Sheena Belanke, supporting the stream, supporting the dream. Thank you guys so much. Keep me alive. Um, the OPL will run a Challenger Cup next to their Pro League with six teams. So... In, North, in, in, in the Smite Pro League, the way we've done it for a long time has been Pro League, minimal, like six to eight teams, and they run a tour, they run a league. And then Challenger Cup, well, good fucking luck. Right? Open bracket, ready, set, go. See what happens. And OPL are trying something different. It's going to be eight weeks of tour, eight weeks of, of uh, pro play with six teams, and then the 
uh, Challenger Cup will also be six teams. And then beneath that will be an open ladder that has relegations into Challenger Cup. And I imagine they have broken down some way to allow Challenger teams to go in to the Pro League, right? That is very interesting. And I'm going to be watching this very much so. I have been Zuri, excuse me, Luna. Now I got to get used to a new name, Ugg. I have been. We're doing a short episode just so I can rest my voice a little bit for this afternoon. But essentially, OPL's challenger scene will be running right next to their pro scene. And I think that's very interesting. I'm going to be watching it to see just how exciting it's going to be. I'm very, very interested. Um, the SPL will also be going on. We've got relegations coming up before Epsilon Invitational, and then of course the the end of the uh, the or the beginning of the fall split. So we'll see how that goes as well. A little bit of a roster change, but before all that, we have to finish our three v three series. And I do want to say something about the three v three series. Um, it hasn't been received nicely since the start, and that kind of sucked. Also, General Smite News, um, former manager of the Leftovers, has walked away and renamed herself from Surrey to Luna Little again. I don't know if Little is there, but Luna's there. So, just keeping everybody up on the uh, on the nonsense. OC does have a land coming up very, very soon, um, and, and we'll keep an eye on that. But going back to the 3v3, um, nobody has really responded well to this. When it was announced, the idea was that there were going to be, there was a lot of money involved, and people didn't like that. And I think that's silly. The idea that if a lot of money is involved, it must be for pro players and pro players only is a stupid thought process. Um, casual players that don't like Conquest or whatever are entitled to having big money tournaments. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. As far as Summer Split, that was never in the cards. We announced it in February, right after SWC. It was never a thing, and nobody brought anything up then. Um, the Summer Split of SPL was essentially traded for a European LAN, and um, basically the, the, the European LAN, and some other... Uh, some other uh, external forces but basically it's the same amount of competition split into two splits and um, a lot of people thought the 3v3 was taking place of that and it's certainly not so that's one oh well two there was a lot of money involved and people didn't like that for some reason so we took the money off and we added it elsewhere to the pro league, which I think was a good movie uh, or was a good move rather. Um, but at the same time, I do think that people acted a little bit entitled when the dirty casuals got a whole bunch of money going towards them. Athena, how are you? I miss you. Um, so in my opinion, I thought that was kind of unfair to the people that want to play in the Joust tournament. They had a really good prize pool ahead of them. And because people were upset that it wasn't geared at pro players, the people that were interested in Joust had to lose their prize pool. And that's upsetting, and I think that's really lame. And I think that is obnoxious. Moving past the actual reception, um... That the actual execution of the 3v3 has been interesting. It's very important for the production that 3v3 be very casual. It's very important that 3v3 be very not buttoned up, right? I think you can have that whenever you want. Not a big deal. Um, thank you very much, Slacker. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and... Uh, the idea of 3v3, like, it can't be, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 3v3, my name is Professional Esports Commentator 1, his name is Professional Esports Commentator 2, and let's get down to business, right? Like, first of all, the game isn't that intricate. Second of all, the game is 
supposed to be for a much more casual audience. It's a it's a summer casual joust series and has always been presented that way. The idea of the broadcast was to bring different people on and have a lot of fun, and that's what we did. We had we had Gandhi come on, we had AJ come on, we had SNK come on. I mean, I did two fats, and, and to be fair, that was like a different world, right? Like, that was a different world. We were doing professional 3v3, like, those were people that wanted to take it seriously. Here was, it, it, there just was never any direction for that. And so, to the people that don't like the broadcast because it's too silly, or, let me see, to the people that don't like the broadcast because it's not serious, to them, I don't pay any. But to the people that don't like the broadcast because it's too silly, I understand a little bit. Um, I get it a little bit. I think that the first week with Gandhi was really good. Scott Gandhi had a really good... Scott Gandhi's really good at doing on-screen conversation. He's been doing it for 10 years. It was me, Scott Gandhi, and Kevin. And I think Gandhi works really well in that arena. Um, week two, we didn't broadcast. Um, week three... We made pina coladas, which I think was a little bit too far. A little bit too far. Um, I'm a little sick of Tina, but you know. Uh, and we tried to reel it in a little bit. And I actually think the week after that was fucking perfect. We had a lot of fun. We still commentated some of the games. And we really, like, I think nailed what it was supposed to be. Yesterday was a little bit, again, a little bit too far gone, but I put that on myself. I'm obviously a little sick. As the host, it's my job to like, you know, and I wasn't able to reel everybody in, so that's kind of my fault. Today, uh, surprise, I'm back at it again. Hopefully, I'll be able to do a little bit better of a job there, so we'll see how that works out and, and figure that out. I just... The problem with this 3v3 that we're getting a lot of nonsense from is you've got a camp of people that are like, this should have never happened. It should have been conquest. And that's like, that was never going to happen. And it has nothing to do with esports or 3v3. Like, it, that just wasn't in the cards. Then you've got people that go, this should be a super serious tournament. And that is never going to happen. That's just not in the cards. It's not the way it's going to go. And then you've got the people that go, this is too silly. And they are right 40% of the time. And there's just a lot of people that seem to hate fun. And I hate them. You know? I... Man, I, I do want to... I got triggered really hard by something somebody said on Reddit. Which is terrible. It's terrible. I'm a professional, and I should not get triggered by Reddit, and I don't, but I actually, I and so somebody was complaining about the 3v3 cast, and I actually felt really shitty about my performance yesterday. Um, so, much, like, everybody has bad, good days and bad days when they go to work, right? Um, and Saturday was one of my bad days, and I certainly felt bad about it. I did not feel good about my performance. And I normally, like, maybe I'll tweet something out, cryptic, because I'm a fucking 2007 Facebook user, right? Like, I don't got a live journal, so I'll just be like, oh, I'm so drained, right? But I felt really bad. Um, I think the broadcast was bad because of me. So... All I said was in the right of thread. I was like, "Yeah, it's not my best job." But this triggered me really hard. I want to. I want to. I want to bring this to light. I'm just going to mention a portion of it during the low action. And to, to 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 give this guy credit, he does help me out. The play by play is usually pretty solid in the SPL, but during the low action points, the color commentary is awful. They talk about hot dogs, inside jokes, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The hot dog thing was one time at an exhibition tournament with the defending world champion Cloud9 going head to head against an open bracket pickup group. 
And it wasn't even me. It was Bart. It was Bart. I went along with it because that's what a good commentator does. Open bracket. Exhibition one time a year ago. I will never escape that. It makes me so mad. It makes me so mad. There are things that people do in their public lives that you cannot forgive. That's not one of them. I don't know. And maybe in trigger aside. Maybe in trigger aside. Um, big important dates in the SPL coming up. Right away, we've got uh, right away, we've got uh, August 6th and 7th is relegation. Risky behavior and sanguine esports came out on top of the Challenger Cup. They'll be taking on Envy and Randozos. Who the fuck knows who's going to be on those teams? So like passive on the F dot skin. Hot dogs in my life. <laughs> oh, it's a shite stream influence. So. Mask and Xenotronics join Luminosity Gaming. That's going to be your biggest sort of uh, biggest sort of thing is Mask and Xenotronics join LG. And like I said, I think that this is finally proof that LG is an average team. Right here. Right here is where you can paint the... Um, the, the target to shoot me. I know nobody likes to hear that. I know nobody likes to hear that Barracuda and Jeff are not a top tier team. I know that nobody wants to hear that Luminosity Gaming is not a number one team at the moment. And he went to SOAR a while ago. Who knows what Boosh is doing. But, Zeno, and, and, and I mean no shade towards Mask or Xenotronics. But, Luminosity Gaming used to be a team that had their pick of the litter. When they were Cloud9, anybody that wants to be on the team just... Hey, can I join Cloud9? And if they're good, they're on it. If adapting moved, right? Well, that's complicated because of Andy. But let's say, I don't know, MLC stealth with their mid laner. If, if Emilito moves, or, or Yaman moves, or whoever you think the best mid in the world is, and they approach Cloud9 of yesteryear, and they say, hey, can I play? The answer is yes, absolutely. Absolutely, right? But now, now you've got Luminosity Gaming accepting players like Mask and Xenotronics. And these are good players. They are very good players. They are very good players. But they are not great players. They are not these highly established, world-renowned players. And... Come next season, they could become this type of roster. Xenotronics looked very strong at the end of last split. And Mask is one of these characters that can play very high, at a very high level. Now, the change to this roster, right, let, me, let me make this important to say. The change to this roster can be very strong. Maybe Xeno and Mask take this LG roster and they're exactly what the team need to compete with the top and they become a 1-2 team next year. Next split. It's possible. Shit, anything's possible. My car could drive me to work tomorrow. It's not likely, but anything's possible. This LG roster has potential in the future. But right now, the great people are not being drawn to Barracuda and Jeff. The great people aren't being drawn to this Luminosity team. They're just not. And I think if you look back a year or two in the past, the great players absolutely are being drawn to this team. So, 
the idea of the era of greatness of LG, Barracuda, and Jeff, and all these guys, I mean, it's not there. I've been saying it for the whole split, for the whole spring split. LG is an average team, slightly above average. I'm not saying they're bad. They're slightly above average. They are not a top team anymore. And I think this solidifies it. If you thought it was just one one analyst's idea after watching their games, if you can't trust one analyst's opinion, which I'm not blasting you for, if you can't trust one analyst's opinion that LG is not a top team anymore because of their performance, you got to look at the facts. And the facts are Xenotronics is not a player that a top team goes after. He's not. Maybe he's good enough to become on a top, become part of a top team. But we have yet to see that. And maybe his future will be paved with gold. But his past is what you look at, and he's been average, above average. Hooray. LG, they are an average team heading into an average split. Will they be able to fight with the tops? We'll be able to see soon. Relegation starts August 6th and 7th. That's this weekend or the upcoming weekend. Um, after that, we've got the Epsilon Invitational plus the All-Star Game, which uh, Epsilon Invitational, Soar, Enemy, Panthera, and Paradigm. And then, of course, like I said, we have All-Stars invited as well. And then the Fall Split starts August 25th. Fall Split is split up into three rounds. Um... August 25th is online placement. Everybody plays everybody. And the results of four weeks give us seeds. Top four seeds come to land. September 30th, we see a whole bunch of players for four weeks of land groups that are situated thanks to the first four weeks of online placement. Yes, you heard that right. Everybody comes to land in the top four. It'll be very cool. The bottom four... We will see the gauntlet, which we will see the Chowder Cup fight up. Chowder Cup team fights number eight, number seven, number six, number five. And whoever winds up winning will be your fifth seed at Super Regionals. So it should be a lot of fun. It should be a lot of fun. Um, I would love to talk about Korea's model. I would love to talk about... The fact that Smite isn't dying whatsoever. It's just your friends that aren't into Smite anymore. Um, you got to see bigger picture. Uh, I would love to talk about my who I think the best players are in each position. Especially since you prompted it, Dean. I feel like I never see you anymore. Um, but I do not have the gas. I'm sorry. Today's episode of First Period is just a news dump. Just going to dump all the news. Uh, we talked about it over the, today. Mask and Xenotronics joined Luminosity Gaming. I think that's a big picture to tell you that LG is an average team. Hopefully Mask and Xeno can improve this squad, but I'm not sure if they can. Chowder Cup gets uh, console gets a Chowder Cup. Uh, it's going to be with Face It. Tier 5 skin is a mage. My announcer pack is out on the PTS and will be out in the game. On Tuesday, got to buy six things in total for summer, so do that, I guess, and holler and let me know how it is. Power Pots, I don't like them. The OPL's Challenger Cup will feature six teams and have an open letter feed into that. I think that's interesting. And SPL, we've got relegation next weekend, Epsilon the weekend after that, and then the weekend after that, the beginning of the fall split. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. I will see you guys a little bit later on for 3v3. Uh, Joust will be doing it. Um, I likely will not be streaming tonight. I'm going to try not to stream tomorrow as well. We'll see how it goes. But I miss you guys. I'm glad that I can see a bunch of you people. And I am going to hurry on back to get my voice as quickly as possible. So rest assured I'm taking care of it no alcohol no smoking no screaming no yelling I didn't get to go to the e-league finals yesterday because I knew I would yell and scream like an idiot and I knew I would drink at the after party so I just didn't go 
So there's that. Oh, well, um, who's out there 